what is up everyone welcome and or welcome back to my channel if you are new welcome my name is mara thank you so much for stopping by as you guys can see by today's title we are switching it up just a tad bit so today we're not talking about our natural hair we're not figuring out ways to make it grow faster or make it healthier um today i actually wanted to do something a little bit different so i'm currently in the process of doing something and if you guys read the title you guys know that obviously it's starting a business so pretty much i'm just bringing to you guys some tips that i found helpful um if you guys are also looking into starting your own business during this quarantine pandemic um i've been in the house for three months now and to be honest with you i'm sick of it so like a month into this quarantine i was like i gotta do something with my life like let me try to see what i can come up with and let me see if i can put that into play so today i'm just telling you guys how i was able to successfully set up my business and everything that i had to do um to get it done so if you guys like this new little series i'm going to be bringing to my channel definitely give me a thumbs up make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so already hit the bell button so you can be notified and we're just gonna get right into this video all right so first things first um when you're starting up your business, obviously you're going to do quite a lot of research. Um, so that was what I did. And if you go on YouTube, like YouTube has an extensive amount of knowledge as well as Google. There is like endless information on how to start and set up your business. For me, I actually use both. I actually use YouTube and I actually Googled some of the things because the things that I needed to do, it kind of was different from what other YouTubers had to do to set up their business. Um, so the main video that really helped me um, actually by a YouTuber, she's called The Fine Guru. And she has like this six step video where she starts a business in under $500. I will link it down below. Um, but like I said, in terms of starting a business, she had to do six steps, whereas I had to do like 10 because obviously she's on the West Coast, she's in California, and I'm in the East, I'm in New Jersey, and Jersey is a little, they a little extra, so we gotta do a little some, some more to get what we need to get done. So like I said, if you guys are like in California or something like that, and you wanna refer back to that video, I will link her video down below, but for today, I'm just gonna be telling you guys the process that I did in Jersey because like I said, there was extra steps and I honestly wasn't prepared for that because I didn't know what I had to do from which point after I got through her point. So I was like, oh, okay. And then I Googled and I had to call a few people, but that that's not story for the day, okay? So I have my notebook right here of the six steps that she did. And I also have my business folder right here of everything that I had to do to set up my business. Um, every document that I have in this folder, it's in order from the way that I did it. So really quickly, I'm just going to run through her steps that she recommended and how she set up her business. Um, so the first thing that she did, she set a maximum budget. So her maximum budget was obviously $500. Um, there are some states where even a permit is like $300 like the certificate like you have to get a license and that can really eat up your budget so determining your budget how much you want to put aside initially to start your business um so that was the main thing that she explained in her video the first important point to set up your business in california on the west coast to her was to get a seller's permit the second was to get your website the third is your domain the fourth is to make sure that the name that you want your business to be is not trademarked if it's not used. If it's not used, then you can definitely go ahead and use it. So that's definitely something that you need to look into as well. The fifth thing is that you need to set up social medias for marketing. So like Instagram, Facebook, things like that. And then the sixth step that she referred to is getting your EIN number. So if you don't know what EIN number, essentially it's like a social security number, but it's for your business. Um, so when it's tax time, um, you can definitely file your taxes through your, through your EIN number. If you are set as the correct business entity, if you are solely a sole prop, um, which is what I'm starting out as, you cannot file your business taxes under your EIN number, but that is something that we're going to get into in a few so those were her six steps the things that i had to do like i said they are a little bit different what i had to do was a little bit more extensive and it was a little bit it was honestly a headache because i was kind of 
wasting time pretty much all right so what i had to do to start off my business i actually looked into an ein number um so with my ein number i actually had it since 2018 um like i said this entrepreneurship type thing this is something that i wanted to do so i set it up in 2018 but it obviously was under a different name so the name that i'm currently using for my business is not the same name that i set up with my ein number but if you set up your ein number as a sole prop it's going to ask you what your business name is what i didn't know is that at the age of 20 or 21 is that your business name as a sole prop is not actually the name of your business so for example you're a company that sells water bottles or water containers or water whatever and you want your company's name to be water to go when you go and set up your EIN number you will not put water to go as your business name because to the IRS that is not your business name as a sole prop what your business name would be as a sole prop would be your full name your full first and last name and if you want to put your middle initial you can do that as well but like I said as a sole prop your business name is not you actually your business name and that's where I got confused um so it would be your business name your address which will be your address and then there's other questions that you have to answer so here's the confusing thing if you're someone that already has a business and you're set as a sole prop and you want to open another business venture as a sole prop you don't need another EIN number and that's actually what I was confused on so I've been trying to get in contact with the IRS for three weeks during this pandemic trying to apply for a new EIN number and I had my existing EIN number from 2018 and when I finally got somebody on the phone actually told that first your business name is not your store name it's actually your first and last name and secondly if you already have an EIN number for an existing business you can only have one EIN number as a sole prop so that first EIN number that you have for your first business is going to be the exact same EIN number that you have for your second business so I actually didn't have to apply for a new EIN number I just had to have them erase my business name which was the original idea that I had in 2018 and have them put my first and last name and middle initial as my business name so that's actually where I got confused um so if you guys are looking into that definitely just make sure that if you're doing it as a sole prop your business name is your first and last name and middle initial not the company name that you want it to be and if you actually have a business and you're set as a sole prop you do not need another EIN number you can use the exact same EIN number because essentially the IRS they don't consider your business and you personally separate as a sole prop you and your business are one you consume complete liability as a sole prop and this is your company 100% so when it's time to file taxes you're gonna file your business taxes under your social security number but the EIN number that's their way of recognizing you as a business and your EIN number can be used for other things down the line such as like bank accounts or credit cards or something like that if you want to set that up for your business so that was the first thing that I had to do and I essentially wasted weeks trying to get in contact with someone just for them to tell me that there was really nothing that I had to do but change my business name to my first and last name. The second thing that I did was figured out what I wanted my business to be named. So while I was waiting three weeks to get in contact with the IRS, I actually figured out what I wanted my business name to be. So I went ahead and I applied for my URL. So I set my URL up through GoDaddy and I actually secured my my website domain so if you don't know what a website domain or a url that's essentially the www.watertogo.com so you so when you set that up you can actually choose if you want to do .net, .com, .org, .edu whatever you wanted to do you could definitely choose which one so when i set up my domain i actually spent 15 dollars and 16 cents that is with 18 cents of taxes included but it was only $15.16 and that does come with privacy and protection so for example if you were to google my business my personal address hopefully will not come up so that's where that protection comes in at this is a one-year registry with GoDaddy so after a year my domain I do have to renew it so if by chance I do forget to renew my domain in that one year my account will not be suspended my account won't go on hold they won't block me or my customers from going to my URL really they won't block me or my customers from going to my url they're just simply going to notify me and reach out to me that a payment is due 
and for me to send over that payment for my URL. But it was only $15.16 and that's only a one time fee for a whole year so I actually didn't mind setting that up right away. So in the state of New Jersey, the third thing that I had to do was once you have your business name, you actually have to register your business as a trade. Um, so like I said with the Fine Gurus video, there is a website that she referred to and it's actually called USPTO.gov. So there's a tab on that website. Um, so you can check to see if the name that you've chosen your business to be, if it's actually trademarked. During the time that I registered my URL, my business name wasn't trademarked. So I was good to go and I can go ahead and register it. But for me, I actually had to register my business name with my county clerk, y'all y'all the county clerk was closed the whole entire time during this pandemic they've been closed from March up until now so going in there in person to get it done and have it done in one day she had to fill out four forms of the exact same paper and just let them know what I wanted my business name to be the address and things like that I actually had to get it notarized and essentially that's just a stamp just letting whoever know that's gonna process these pages that someone who has the credentials to notarize documents they physically watch you sign these documents um, so once they're processed by your county clerk or by my county clerk they can just go ahead and see that someone official was watching me sign these documents and then send it over to them so that's what I had to do and like I said I had to mail it in so I believe I mailed it in on a Tuesday I went through USPS to have them send it off and then I got a response I believe the following Wednesday actually, the fourth step that I actually had to do for my business was to register it so like I said I'm starting off as a sole prop so when I went on the business registry website it actually asked me if I was creating a new business entity if I was an LLC partnership or a prop so I selected the option for sole prop and I just filled in my information um so most of the questions they're pretty much common sense um, but I don't know it's just like tedious questions on there like what is the code for your business you have to search the code if you're like an apparel company it's gonna be like code 55001 stuff like that so you actually have to do like tedious work just to set this up because they're requesting codes they're requesting the date that you're intending to start business um, they're intent they're requesting the date that you're intending to make your first sale I don't even have my thoughts the other yet at this time so I'm not even sure the date that I'm intending to to make my first um, sale. I can't tell you how to answer these questions because I did not know how to answer some of the harder ones myself. I had to Google some of the questions. That's why I said YouTube and Google, they pretty much are your best friend when you are trying to start a business because they have an extensive amount of information. And if you get stuck on a question, more than likely if Google doesn't have the answer, you can go on YouTube and vice versa because I was really stuck and it took me three days to try to get this registered. And I believe I actually called the New Jersey office about four times because they were only doing phone inquiries and they weren't going in person so I can't like physically go there and talk face to face so I was on the phone with them multiple times and it took me three days to get this done so essentially when you're done registering your business as soon as you complete it, you're, you're prompted to print out these documents. Because I'm in the state of New Jersey, I'm actually intended to collect taxes. I was actually provided with a certificate of authority. I also printed out the business registration confirmation page just so that way I can refer back to it. Because this particular page, it has like your document locator number, it has the filer ID, the filing date, and if you needed to go back and print out particular documents, you can go ahead and do so. So essentially when you register your business, not only are you notifying your state that you are creating a new business and a new business is being opened in the state of New Jersey but it's letting them know again that you're collecting taxes and it's giving you authorization pretty much to collect taxes with this certificate of authority you are able and you are required to collect the required taxes after I completed the business registration I actually received my business registration certificate probably a week later in the mail so I'm official also on that business registration certificate it's also going to state your trade name and for me as a sole prop my business registration was free as of right now on step four I believe the only thing that I had to pay for was the domain which again was 1516 I believe the $50 to get my trade name registered and I had to pay $12 to UPS to get my four documents notified so the fifth step for me I opened a business checking account 
like I said, I'm in New Jersey, um, so I actually bank personally with Chase, and I do know that Chase, they are pretty good. I've been banking with them since I got my first job at 16, and I put my little $300 paycheck that took me four weeks to get into my account. But definitely do your research. Um, so for me, when I did my research on Chase business account, um, I seen that they had a service fee of $15, I believe. Some banks, they have service fees, so that's definitely something that you have to look into. But with Chase, that service fee can be waived if you set up a business savings account as well and the savings account actually helps because if you're a business that's actually going to be um, charging taxes on your items or for your service you can automatically just transfer the tax charge over to your savings account so that way when it's actually time for you to pay taxes for your business you can already have the sales tax put aside the next thing that was sent to me I actually believe it's a part of step four which was the taxes or registering your business I actually received a document from the Department of Treasury Division of Taxation in New Jersey and this document, once you register your business and you are authorized to request taxes from your customers or charge taxes to your customers, they will send over this document to you. I'm not sure if it's the same for every state, but they sent me this document. It pretty much tells you your tax ID, which again is your business EIN number. And depending on what type of category your business in, you may be required to pay taxes monthly, quarterly, yearly, um, or which they consider to be annually. So this document right here is pretty much just telling me when it's time for me to pay over the sales tax I receive from my customers here is what I have to do to enter and when <laughs> it is due so because I notified New Jersey that I plan to open my business July 6th of 2020 um, my first tax payment is due on October 20 of 2020 um, that's when I'm required to make my first payment so if I got two sales and I received $10 worth of taxes from those two sales and it totals $20 taxes in total from July 6th up until October 20th. I'm required to tell them that and I'm probably required to pay off that $20 over to them because I'm collecting taxes in the state of New Jersey so that money goes to the state of New Jersey, okay? So on my end, those are the official steps that I had to do. Um, Like I said, they did differ from the Fine Guru stuff. I do know some states, they do require for you, for you to have a business license and they require for you to pay money to actually get a seller's permit. And those are the two points that mainly differed from mine to hers. Um, for the state of New Jersey, if you're an online retailer just selling clothing, you are actually not required to have a business license. I thought that's what I had to do. Um, I thought all states had to have a business license to operate, but they said I didn't need to have a business license. I thought I was gonna have to shove out more money for that. The last thing that I also had trouble looking into was a seller's permit. As long as you register your business and you receive the certificate of authority in the state of New Jersey, that authorizes you to buy items wholesale. Um, so on my certificate of authority, it actually tells you that the enclosed NJ state sales tax certificate of authority document CA-1 is a permit to issue NJ resale certificate. So for New Jersey, again, they do not have seller's permit. Instead, what they have is a resale certificate. Um, but if you were to complete that resale certificate and they accept it, you pretty much become ex for paying taxes on that item for your state. I think that's everything as far as like the actual startup and the official part of your business. Um, the only remaining thing that you have to do is set up your website and to purchase inventory that you are intending to sell or if you're a marketing something or whatever you're doing for my website because I'm intending to sell items I'm actually going through Shopify but I do have an upcoming video on Shopify on how to operate it and just an intro to Shopify because I'm actually a little bit familiar with it I did my internship using mainly Shopify as of right now that is all that I have for you guys if you guys have any questions definitely leave them down in the comments and I will get back to you like I said I do hope to start like an entrepreneur type series on my channel so if I can help you guys then that's what I want to do but yeah that is all that i have for you guys today if you guys like this video if you found it helpful definitely give me a thumbs up if you haven't done so already please be sure to subscribe down below and make sure you hit that notifications button so you can get notified every single time that i upload again i do hope you guys like this video and i will see you guys in the next one